and welcome inside Canada Life Centre. I'm your host, Sarah Orleski. This is the Winnipeg Jets season preview show presented by Budweiser. Over the next little bit, we will hear from a number of different analysts as well as players, coach, as we get you set for this season for the Jets and their home opener, which happens this Friday, October the 14th, against the New York Rangers. We don't need to spend a lot of time on what happened last season. This is a group that was looking to turn the page. They were not happy, obviously, with how things ended. And we heard that in their comments last spring. But a new coaching staff has brought in a new sense of enthusiasm for this group. And while a lot of the player personnel has remained the same, there have been, obviously, some changes. So let's take a look at some of the newest additions to the Winnipeg Jets organization. Most notably, David Riddick, who will be backing up Connor Hellebuck this year. He signed a one-year deal this summer, as well as veteran forward Sam Gagne. And then on Monday, Axel Janssen fialbi was picked up off of waivers from the Washington Capitals. A number of familiar faces did leave. Paul Stastny, Eric Comrie, Evgeny Svechnikov. Amongst the ones that left in free agency, Jonathan Kovacevic left via waivers he was picked up by the Montreal Canadiens during this training camp. Now before camp even began, headlines were already being made with the decision to expand the leadership group. There is no captain to begin this season for the Jets. And a real point of emphasis for Rick Bonus and this coaching staff has been team, family, teamwork. To that end, they went to BAMP for a few days after their final preseason game in Calgary for some more team bonding for it. Amongst the words that we have heard often throughout the camp, he wants this team to be aggressive, to play on their toes. He wants their defense to become more activated, more involved. Just 24 goals for the blue line last year. That was a number that he singled out as being unacceptable. He's looking for more from them this year for it. Also, he wants to get rid of the bad habits. That has been something that he has really tried to emphasize. Get the veterans out of the long shifts that sometimes we've been used to seeing them play. He wants this group to work as a team, to work together. Well, as we continue to talk about not only training camp, but obviously looking to the season ahead, very happy to be joined by Paul Edmonds, Jamie Thomas, voices of the Winnipeg Jets on CJOB. Right, too. I mean, there was a lot of attention, obviously, paid to this training camp in preseason. The Jets go 4-1-1 one one preseason, but we all know it's preseason. It doesn't really matter for a whole lot when it's all said and done. But with new coaches, new systems being implemented, Paul, I'll start with you. What stood out to you most throughout training camp and preseason? Well, from the opening drop of the puck when they got scrimmaging and having drills was how Rick Bonas sees control of this group and kind of had a fresh coat of paint right from the beginning. He allowed his assistant coaches to get involved as well. There was a lot of communication, a lot of one-on-ones. There was different drills. The pace and the tempo really stood out for me as well. And then the, the I think, adjustment to the new systems. There was a buy-in from the players. So the coaches came in with a genesis and to kind of turn things around, the players bought in right away understanding that last year was not acceptable. So I think there was a high pace, high tempo and a, a real good sort of feeling about how they assembled to start training camp and that ruled right through training camp and the preseason schedule. You mentioned 4-1-1 one, and one in the preseason schedule. Is that applicable to the regular season schedule? I'm not sure, but if they were 1-1-4, one, one, and four, we'd be talking about <laughs> that in a negative way. So I think everything was very good for the last three weeks for the Winnipeg Jets to break camp. And what did you like out of Jamie? Just I don't think anybody could have left training camp saying they didn't get a chance, right? Billy Hainala, I go down the list of the younger players that all got a look throughout training camp. And of course, Rick Bonus had said the beginning part, everyone's gonna get their chance. Nobody, and you heard this quite often, nobody's played their way off the roster. So I think if anybody came in this camp saying they didn't get a chance, they kind of be, they, they would, you can't really see that happen. So I think the coaching staff was as fair as they could be. Maybe they had the lineup set in a certain way, but there's some surprises along the way. So I just really liked how everybody got a, sh a shot to prove 
and put in a position to succeed. So you look at Vilja Hainla got power play time, you know, Dylan Sandberg got penalty kill time. Those types of things stood out to me in camp. When you look at the depth chart, look at, now this is going to be a depth chart that is in flux, obviously, and what happens in terms of game one of the season does not necessarily mean that it might hold true for game five, game 30, and, and so on for it. But when you look at this depth chart right now, I think the top six is what we expected it to be with Cole Perfetti getting a chance on that second line. Then you look at the bottom six, though. That, to me, when you're talking about forwards, had a lot of intrigue, Paul. Well, it did, and the fourth line, I think, will still have some volatility to it. What I'm looking for on the depth chart is the third line, and I think it's going to be pretty constant with Adam Lowry there in his 13 goals from last year. And now you get a guy that played with him for the last number of years back from Seattle, had a little cup of coffee with the Jets again and Mason Appleton after that trade. So there's a couple of guys that I think are going to be very, very incumbent on your defensive style, plus asked to provide a little bit more offense and some penalty kill. The wild card for me is Morgan Barrett. And here's a guy that, again, through that trade, Andrew Kopp leaves, Morgan Barron comes over, he gets an opportunity in the lineup last year. He's going to seize that left wing spot on that third line. I'm looking to see what that third line can provide Rick Bonus and Scott Arneal and the coaching staff this year because you know Adam Lowry is going to be defensively responsible. He's going to go out in specialty teams. He's going to be accompanied by a guy that's done that as well. Can they bring Morgan Barron along as well? And can they fit in to provide a little bit more offense to complement the top six? That's where I'm looking for sort of some movement on this depth chart and at the same time having a little bit more consistency on the depth chart with that third line and the makeup of it. Well, and you know that in a perfect world in a scenario that Rick Bonus would really like to see utilize all four lines and he'd like to use when the four the fourth line he'd like to use them between 10 and 12 minutes for a game as well and you mentioned I mean there's going to be flex on that fourth line for it I think that depending on who the opposition is could have it at the time that we're recording this now we're not sure whether or not they're going to go with 14 forwards 7d 13 forwards 8d so there's a little bit up in the air as well but there have been some interesting battles Jamie there, there certainly has and I, I the one I focused on was on defense and it's the 6-7 defense but now we know Billy Hanel has been uh, sent down to the Manitoba Moose so now it's Dylan Sandberg and Logan Stanley and I think the fair part about this is or not the, so much the fair part but speaking with Scott Arneal the associate coach of the Jets the Jets play in a heavy division so I thought once we had heard that from, we, we know that, but the fact that they need some size. So that's where Dylan Sandberg and Logan Stanley come in. Logan Stanley, to be fair, was banged up last year. Had a, a rough sophomore season in the National Hockey League, but really brought his A game as camp went along and certainly into the preseason. So I thought he stepped up in there. And then we'll watch where Dylan Sandberg grows from there. Again, going back to what I said a little bit earlier, Got some penalty kill time to work on that part of his game. That's where they're going to be counting on him quite a bit this year. So both guys bring size. Hopefully both players bring physicality because it's going to be needed in a long National Hockey League season. Obviously, some players have been assigned to the Manitoba Moose throughout this. I mean, you mentioned Billy Inela. Brad Lambert was certainly a, the hot topic early on in camp as well. The 18-year-old drafted 30th overall in this past year's draft for it. So let's start, actually, let's start with Billy for it. Do you think it's the right move to put him down with the Manitoba Moose where he is going to play big minutes if he wasn't going to be that sixth defenseman? To, to me, Ville Hainala, the Jets have two players like him, smaller stature, lots of skill in Josh Morrissey and Neil Pionk. And I understand what I will say about Ville is the confidence is there. I, this is probably the most confident I've seen Ville play since he was drafted by the Jets. So I, I think there's, I mean, it's unfortunate for him. He's progressed as a player, his confidence is there, his game has improved, but the Jets already have Morrissey and Pionk. So if there's an injury, you know that you can call Billy Hanel up. So I think this is best for his development and best for the organization in this situation. And it's so difficult to make the, an NHL roster, obviously, at 18 years of age for it. Brad Lambert bet getting that opportunity to develop his game. Is this the right move in your opinion, Paul? Absolutely. And there's lots of options for him. And let's not forget that he fell in the draft. There was a lot of made about that. The fact that he didn't play in that final game for Finland and the in the world championships or, or for the world juniors that happened late summer. This guy came in and was absolutely electric this year uh, in training camp and then through the preseason games that he played. And I think that there was a sway at one point to see if he was going to be on that roster and he gave the coaching staff something to think about. But this guy won't be 19 until December 19th, his champagne birthday by the way. There's lots of options for him. And if he goes down to the moose, he's played against adults and men before in, in Liga over in Finland. 
then it might be a good landing zone for him. If they deem that it's probably an opportunity for him to get a little bit more adept to the North American game, Seattle could be a real good landing spot for him as well in the Western Hockey League. They are pegged to be not only uh, a favorite to win the Western Hockey League championship, but the Memorial Cup. He'll get to play in the World Junior Championship again, regardless of where he is. The only thing is, if you send him down to Seattle in the Western Hockey League, they make a deep run, you're not going to get him back. At least you have the opportunity, if he's with the Moose, to kind of recall him and see what he has at the NHL level. But there's lots of options and lots of time for Brad Lambert. And he was certainly excitable when we got to watch him play because he has a lot of gifts, a lot of talents. And I think that this is a great, abs a great acquisition for the Winnipeg Jets via that draft. When you look at this team going into this season, I think that there are a lot of question marks, not really so much about the roster, but what we're going to see on the ice. Will that buy-in from Rick Bonus? will that be able to translate into those all-important wins for it? Paul, when you look at this team right now, heading into Friday's home opener for you, overall, what is the biggest question mark heading into the season? It has to be defensive play for me, and I think that generically you're looking at it from a road standpoint. This is a team that for the first time in a long time last year had a losing road record. That is not really fitting for a team that wants to get back to the playoffs and erase the eight point deficit that they had. You can look at it, home was okay. They were a plus 25 last year, goals for, goals against differential. That's okay in my book. Where it really stumbled for them last year, minus 28 on the road, goals for, goals against. They need to be better on the road. That starts with defensive play because you don't really kind of go out and have that high octane offense on the road. It's a different style of game and they have to adhere to that. And I think Rick Bonus and Scott Arneal and the rest of the coaching staff are certainly having that kind of game plan put into place and be better defensively. They need to be better defensively inside their own zone and particularly on the road to garner a few more points to help them get to the playoffs because the home record's been pretty solid throughout. Jamie, there's a lot of self-reflection, I think, that took mm -hmm. place for a number of the players during the offseason. And they self-admittedly, at the end of last season, did not play, obviously, the way that they wanted to individually and as a group. So when you look at this roster in your mind, who do you key in on as having to have that bounce-back season? Well, and I, there's, there's so many places you can go. There's a lot of players last year that didn't have the year that they wanted. And I think, first and foremost, when I think about this, it, it has to be Neil Pionk. And it's not because he played terrible, it's just because he wasn't at the level that we're used to seeing him at. He's, he wasn't in the, he's not getting underneath the skin of opponents like he did with Connor McDavid throughout their playoff series a couple of years ago. And when he's in the face of, def of, of the opposition, he's more effective. And clearly with this new system with Rick Bonus, it's going to help him jump up the play offensively. When he's throwing his weight around, that's when Neil Pionk is at his most effective. So whoever he ends up being paired with, and of course the spin around that we see so many times, I didn't see that a whole lot towards the end of the year. I think that was because he was banged up. So a healthy Neil Pionk is integral to this team returning to the playoffs as one of the Jets' top four defensemen. All right, well, looking forward to see what happens for it. I, I mean, there are a number of players that you could choose from. I'm also interested to see how Mark Shifley responds with this. I think a lot of attention is going to be paid to number 55 this season to see whether or not he goes back to maybe the level of play and continues to expand his game the way that a lot of people are hoping to see. I was such a pleasure. Thank you. Of course. It was all ours. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say that, Paul. I'll invite you back again. Thanks so much. Make sure that you catch them. You don't ever want to miss it. Paul Edmonds and Jamie Thomas on CJOB. Skate. Oh, my God. Go in. Oh, my God. Go in. Let's go. Let's go. Buddy. Dude, what a shot. What a shot for the oh, camera. Let's that go. amazing. Oh, my God. How'd that go in? Oh, baby. I don't know. That had to have been one of my favorite social media moments over the last couple of weeks. Team bonding at its finest with Mark Shifley and Dylan DeMello. Now, one of the things that Rick Bonus has really emphasized in his short time here is communication. That's something that he's known for excelling at, especially as he's trying to build this new culture here and develop relationships with players. Go back to that word about teamwork, about family. We had the opportunity earlier during training camp to mic up the new head coach. Hold that red line! Cut in and shoot! Go, that way. Good stick, good stick, good stick. Play it! 
Play it. Let it go. Let it go. Play it. Play it. You guys keep talking to Morgan. Get him on board like he hasn't played. Help him out. Help him out. Talk to him. He can keep up to you guys. He's smart. He's skilled. You'll be a real good two-way line. He's going to help you. I always love the chance to be able to hear how a coach and player interacts. More examples of that communication that Rick Bonus feels is so important. And just before the team left for Banff, we had the opportunity to sit down with the head coach. Well, Rick, you were obviously familiar with the Jets before and having been in the Central Division for so long, but what have you learned about this team now through training camp that you didn't know before? Well, you don't know your players as well until you get to watch them every day and you get to communicate with them every day. Uh, you, you don't know their moods when they come in in the morning. You don't know their practice habits. Um, all the very important details of making, uh, making a good hockey club, the culture and the work habits and bringing it all together. So I've enjoyed, I've always had a lot of respect for the way they played the game, but I've also now really enjoyed getting to know them, understand them a lot better, and uh, just, just getting that personal one-on-one -on -one that you, a coach and a player needs today. So I've learned an awful lot about our players, and I certainly like what I see. Was that something that, like where did that belief of yours come from, that relationship that needs to exist? I mean, I know that you've spoken a lot about how you've evolved as a coach, obviously, over the years, but what was it that kind of hammered home for you, the fact that this was a direction that needed to be taken? Um, I always said to myself when I got into coaching, I want to coach the way I want to. I'll coach the way I wanted to be coached. And that means you want to talk and have an open conversation with the coach, and you want to know where you stand. That's really, that's all a player wants to know. Where do I stand? There's no gray area, it's gonna be black and white. And the only way you can do that is have those one-on-one -on -one conversations and build that trust. Once you get the trust, they may not always like what you're telling them, because trust me, they, they don't. <laughs> but you gotta be honest with them. And you gotta look them in the eye. And that's all I ever wanted as a player. And that's all I've ever done as a coach. And again, when you're telling them things they don't want to hear, um, they don't like it, but they're gonna respect the fact that they're hearing it. When looking inside the dressing room on the walls, notice that you have four words written on there, together, aggressive, details, and compete. Does that sum up the philosophy of what you're looking at for the Winnipeg Jets? Yes, listen, today's NHL, there's so little separating so many teams. Um, all those little details of, of building that culture and building that trust in each other and building that caring. The, the players have to care what happens. They, and they show they care by not what, what they say, but what they do on the ice and what they do together. So you saw the other night twice, like somebody took a run at, uh, at, St at, at Stenland and all of a sudden Lowry's right in there. Wheeler's jumping in. And that's what you want. I, I always tell the players that they take a run at one of us, they take a run at all of us. And we're a family. And, and we, have to, we have to stick up together, we have to care for each other, we have to play for each other. And that's all the together, and, but stay aggressive, uh, uh, teamwork and details, all those things make a difference in, in a winning team in this league because again, it goes back to, there's very little separating the teams in this league and we are in a very, very tough conference and a very, very tough division. And all those little things mean something. What has the reception been like to that message from the players? I think it's been great because it's a new voice. You know, they had Paul here for an awful long time. And as I tell the players, I'm still getting to know you. You're still getting to know me. You're still getting to know the way I do things, what I like, what I don't like. And I'm still getting the same feeling about you guys. So we're kind of working our way through that. But uh, and, and from my end of it, the players might tell you something different. But from my end of it, it's been very positive and very constructive and uh, it helps all of us going into the season getting to know each other and trusting each other. When you look at the start to the regular season schedule, it's a tough start for, for this Jets team for it. What are you looking for when you go into that first game October 14th against the Rangers? What are you looking for from this Jets team? Well, it is a tough start because that'll be the Rangers' third game. They're playing Tuesday, Thursday, and I get it that it's back-to-back. -back. They'll be in Minnesota the night before, but they'll be game ready. So now we, we're going to play in Calgary on Friday night, and then we're going to have three days up in Banff. So what we have to do in Banff is to create as many game situations as we can 
so it helps us Friday night because there's a big gap there between our last exhibition game and our first game. And again, the Rangers will be their third game. They'll be game ready. So we have to do a very good job up in Banff of getting the team ready. And that's what I'll be looking for Friday night against the Rangers. Okay, are we a little step behind because we're not in the swing of things yet? Uh, and then we'll have to make the adjustments from there. But uh, th that game, that first game is gonna be hard on us. And we, we understand, and the start of the schedule is gonna be hard on us, but it's gonna show us who's picked up what we're trying to do and who needs still a little bit of work and in what areas do we need to put a lot more time in that moving forward. Kindly, what do you think the strength or what do you hope the strength of this team is going to be? Togetherness. I really do. I just hope they come together on the ice and everything I am hearing to listen to them talking and everything, watching them on the ice, I get a much stronger feeling now that that's going to happen than before camp until you get again, until you get to know them, until you get to watch their practice habits, game habits, preparation habits, all those things. I feel a lot better going into where, where we are now uh, prior to the start of the training camp in terms of that, of being together. Always love the chance to talk with Coach and looking forward to doing that even more throughout this season. As mentioned, it isn't an easy start to the season for the Jets when you look at their first four games season opener on Friday, as mentioned, against the Rangers. And then they head out onto the road for their next three, including a game against the defending Stanley Cup champions. When they do come home, that fifth game of the season is going to be against the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's a lot to be excited about when it comes to the Winnipeg Jets on the ice as well as off the ice. From our perspective, we're looking forward to bringing you an exciting season of new content, including a revamped post-game show brought to you by Budweiser, new interviews as well as a behind-the-scenes series called Runway that will be premiering on TSN, presented by Bell MTS. Uh, this year, we've we've got a chip on our shoulder. I think collectively, that's that's been the narrative, talking amongst the guys. The message on down to us is we, we've got something to prove. And I expect it to be a hard camp. Everyone's fighting for, for, for a spot. Now watch your changes here. Nice play, Gags. Gags with the hand. See you on the ice, I want the ball. It's going to be a tough shift. I want you to have that reputation. One of the things that we're so excited about with Runway is to be able to give you that behind the scenes glimpse of the Winnipeg Jets players as well as the organization throughout this season. One of the players inevitably we will be seeing on there, Cole Perfetti, the 20 year old looking forward to having a starring role with this team. A lot of people wanting to see what he can do in that top six role. He is healthy going into this regular season as well and has the opportunity to start the season alongside Pierre-Luc Dubois and Blake Wheeler. Earlier during camp, we caught up with Cole. All right, Cole, when you look at coming into this season and the opportunity that exists for you, how are you approaching this upcoming year? Yeah, I mean, it's exciting as a young guy coming up. Hopefully, uh, you know, just trying to play my best, trying to help the team win. It, it's, uh, it's exciting. It's a, every kid's dream playing in the NHL, and um, it's, a, it's a pretty cool opportunity. So. Just try to take the most of it and uh, make the most of it and, uh, you know, enjoy it. What was your biggest takeaway from last season and getting a taste of the pro game? Yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot. I mean, it's hard to narrow it down to one. Like, there's so much to take away, whether it's on the ice, off the ice, you know, the way you travel, all that kind of stuff. It's a big adjustment and, you know, it's not easy as a, as a young kid, but, um, you know, the guys in the room are so good. The, the management, they help out so much. So. I mean, it, they make it easy on us, but um, at the same time, there, there was a lot to, to adjust to and, and learn, but um, that's where I'm kind of taking it one day at a time, learning from the guys and, and just trying to, you know, get more comfortable and, and get better every day. We mentioned try to take things from the guys, and I know you spent time with a number of them throughout the summer, including Mark Shifley for it. So you're known for your hockey IQ. So as, as well, what are conversations like between the two of you? Yeah. Yeah, we actually went to Michigan this summer. Um, we had picked him up in Kitchener and we drove, so it's like a four or five hour drive. And there was a lot of golf and a lot of hockey talk. So um, yeah, it was, a, it was a 
it was fun. Like we, we have similar, like very similar interests, and we, you know, we both love golf, both love hockey, and I would say we're both kind of hockey nerds. So like, we were talking a lot about that, and and um, it was great spending the week with him and and hanging out with him. He's such a smart guy, such a nice guy, and he's helped me out so much um, since last year, throughout this summer, and so far this year. So. Um, it's great to have him as a teammate, as a friend. So what sort of things do you pick his brain with? Well, Give us an idea of what sort of conversations going on with I hockey. mean, I pick his brain big time on, on golf because he's so good at golf. <laughs> I mean, obviously he's so good at hockey too, but his golf game is, uh, I struggle in that department big time, so I need his, I need his help. So, um, you know, he's, he's amazing and he's, he's a great guy to golf with because he's always trying to pump you up and, and make you feel better about yourself after hitting a bad shot. So. Um, yeah, but with the hockey, you know, he's he's been around nine, ten years now in the league, so you know he's seen it all. He's obviously he's he's experienced everything, and um, he's a, he's a heck of a hockey player. So just trying to you know pick his brain with you know what he would do in certain situations, stuff like that, um, where he would go, and 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 stuff that he finds helps him on the ice. So. What, are you the type of player that goes into a season with set goals in terms of I'd like to hit this sort, this number of goals or points? You know, obviously you want to you know put up numbers and and um, you know be successful in, in that regard. But you know, I, I'm not coming in with a, a set goal of it. You know, if I hit this, it's a successful year. Um, I think you know, I'm just trying to come in and, and, and make the guys around me better and, and learn and and. and you know, just get that, you know, take each, one step each day and, and, and get better every day and, um, you know, learn from it. It's still its first year in the NHL, so um, it's pretty special. So, Give me some, one area of your game, sorry, that you that you keyed in on during the off season that once you were ready to get training yep. that you wanted to improve. Well, obviously the biggest thing is skiing. I think, you know, not the, like, fat, most, like the fastest guy out there, but, um, you know, once I started getting back on the ice from the injury, the, the big thing was, was my skating and, and you know, getting a taste last year, 18 games, how fast it is and, and how fast you have to be up strong and, and good on your edges. I, I realized, um, you know, my skating was good, but it needs to go to another level if I want to be successful. So I really worked on that hard this summer. And then, you know, the, the cliche, working hard in the gym, getting stronger, that's that's obviously huge for me as a 20 year old. Um, so, that, and then obviously just making sure my, my, my health was okay, the injury and, and everything like that. And, you know, spent a long time rehabbing and it, and it feels great now so um, it was a successful summer. Final question, you're living with Dylan Sandberg again. How do you think Dylan would describe you as a roommate? Oh, I don't know, hopefully uh, <laughs> hopefully he likes me. We lived together last year and you know we talked about it for about 30 seconds at the end of last year we were like hey do you want to live together again? He's like yeah sure let's go. <laughs> so you know we get along great. Um, we're very similar guys and, and we have similar interests. We love sports. We love, you know, watching TV together, hanging out, playing video games. So um, hopefully he likes me. <laughs> hopefully he describes me as a good roommate, but, uh, you know, we'll see. He'll, he'd probably say some, some smart, smart ass remark, but. Well, we mentioned that there have been so many changes when it comes to systems. Special teams have also been changed. And to talk a little bit more as we continue to break down what's new with the Winnipeg Jets, happy to have the head writer for WinnipegJets.com, Mitchell Clinton, join me. You're also going to be joining me on some of the post-game shows, so really looking forward to what this season has ahead of us. But let's talk a little bit about special teams because we know that this was certainly in the back half of training camp, a real focus for Rick Bonus and the coaching staff. It for was. It. This was an area that they were making some changes to in terms of personnel also in terms of systems for it how important is this special teams is this power play going to be for this group i mean incredibly uh because i mean you look at the the teams over the the national hockey league last year of the top 16 on the power play only three of them missed the playoffs so clearly this is a group that needs to have a really strong time on the power play this year and what they've done while well, they've implemented a number of changes i mean nikolai ehlers is going to be on that that far side, that strong side, that's typically where he ends up when it comes to uh, the second power play unit over the last few years. But now he's on that top unit. Of course, off the rush, this team's going to be special when it comes to whether it's 5-on-5 five five or the power play. This is the, the type of goal that you're going to see perhaps a little bit more from the Winnipeg Jets this year. Teams have to respect the fact that Nikolai Ehlers can shoot from here and he can score from here and he's done it numerous times. But as soon as those penalty killers commit, that's going to open up a lane for Mark Scheifele in that slot spot. But the other thing that Brad Lauer talked about, whether it's Nikolai Ehlers scoring goals like that, 
off great passes from, from Sam Gagne, whoever he's on the power play unit with, there's going to be motion and you're going to see a lot of motion. And the reason for that is to create those mismatches, create those seams that the Winnipeg Jets can exploit. Brad Lauer wants, you know, maybe 10 to 12 more power play goals this year. Now, if you take the Winnipeg Jets numbers from last year, they were 17th in the National Hockey League when it came to offense on the power play. You add those 10 to 12 goals, it's about a couple per month. All of a sudden, that would have put them third last year. So clearly, you know, do those goals come in a 5-1 win or really when you really need them in a 3-2 game? It's, it's hard to predict, but clearly the power play is going to be a point of strength no matter what unit for the Winnipeg Jets. This year. Well, and said earlier that you know, the preseason is what it is, for yes. lack of a better term. But when you're trying to gauge maybe some of the different things that they've implemented and what we've seen from them, the penalty kill was also successful yes. during the preseason and something certainly for them to build on going into the regular season. Well, and they just can't have the start on the penalty kill that they did last year. I mean, early December, this is a team that was 31st in the NHL on the penalty kill at around 66% and they was losing them some games. Now in December, all of a sudden they catch a little bit of a surge. They change how they're doing things. They're a little bit more aggressive. They get to about the middle of the pack in the, in the National Hockey League. So you talk about preseason and how much you can really glean from it. I think we've, what we've seen is a lot of aggression still there. I mean, Adam Lowry, Mason Appleton are going to play a big role on this penalty kill. They always do. They're one of the best at just kind of denying those zone entries or making sure that they create the turnover to get the puck down the ice. Now the preseason, we talk about the, the second last game that they played, which was against the Calgary Flames. Perfect night on the penalty kill there. Then in the preseason finale in Calgary against a very veteran squad that the Flames put out there. Perfect yet again. They're over 90% on the penalty kill in the preseason. You get off to a start like that on the PK, especially given the fact that the power play you, you feel is probably going to be an asset for you. All of a sudden you start to win some of these special teams battles and that bodes well for Winnipeg. You mentioned that slow start for the penalty kill last year for it. And you just, you can't make that up in terms of where right. you rank in the teams. That even when they started to get better as the season went on, it's so difficult to be able to right. make any sort of gains on that. Okay, goaltending. We haven't had the chance to discuss it, so I wanted to bring it up with you. Yeah. It isn't something that's been talked a lot about throughout training camp, but inevitably throughout every season we discuss the workload that Connor Hellebuck has both in terms of the shots that he faces quantity and quality for them but also the number of starts he yes. started 66 games last season we know that he you know usually leads the league or is in the top two when it comes to games started for it no Eric Comrie this year David Riddick comes in for it in your mind does Connor Hellebuck ideally have to play fewer games with the hopes that he will be fresh this team is able to make it into the postseason I think that's always the goal you kind of hope that that's kind of how the schedule is going to end up uh, but when I think of the the backup goaltending situation in Winnipeg I always think of you know you go back to when Lauren Brossois came in and, and at that point he was you know there were some questions of whether he could handle that job his permanent ability in the, in the NHL I think he rattled off 10 straight wins and then Eric Comrie comes in as backup at the start of last season. And the questions were kind of similar. You know, is he you know, ready to take on this role? He was spectacular and earned a, a spot in Buffalo. So for David Riddick, this is a guy that's a, you know, he's an NHL caliber goaltender. He was an NHL all-star in 2020. Yeah, he's having, you know, wanting to have a little bit of a bounce back season from what he had in Nashville last year. And again, you don't want to lean too much into preseason stats, but his goals against in the preseason, including that shutout against the Flames, was under two. So clearly off to a good start. It's always going to be a conversation between Connor Hellebuck and Wade Flaherty, two guys that have just a spectacular working relationship as to the balance between that rest and that rhythm that Connor Hellebuck likes to be in. We're going to see how it goes, I think, over the course of this season. It's a little bit odd that the Winnipeg Jets are getting off to the start that they are playing on Friday, their first game of the regular season, while other teams have kind of started. You know that usually means your schedule is going to be a little bit bunched up. So I would say when you start to look at back-to-backs and when you get your threes and fours, I think you're going to start to see David Riddick a little more just because you're going to want to get him as familiar with his defenseman as possible as one of the big things that the goaltenders really work on. So I think the short answer to your question is yes, but it's also situational that it's hard to predict. Yeah, well, and if they're able to use him a little bit more often earlier on in the season, maybe get Connor Hellebuck, keep him fresh so that mm -hmm. that way, if you do need to rely on him, especially down the stretch, you know that your starting goaltender is going to be getting the majority of the games if they are in that playoff push come end of March, come April as well. Thanks so much for this. Again, you can catch all of Mitchell's writing on winnipegjets.com and see you on the post game show as well. Thanks Can't for this. Can't wait.
Another way that you can hear Mitchell Clinton is on the Ground Control podcast. Don't forget that is one of the great ways to be able to keep up to date with everything that is going on with the Winnipeg Jets. So thank you, everyone. That is the end of this season preview show. We have you all set and ready to go. Don't forget, the season opener comes this Friday, October the 14th, against the New York Rangers. We will see you then.